So over the course of your life, you've likely seen a regular umbrella work, but have you ever seen an air umbrella work? Well, here on Ryan Make, we're going to be making an air umbrella and putting it to the test. When those sky tears beset you, you may have wished for a rain jacket or a good old fashioned umbrella. The way the water slides right off the umbrella is nearly therapeutic. But what if there was an option that was the same size as a traditional umbrella, but was more expensive, needed batteries, made noise, was prone to breaking, and it gets people around you and likely yourself wet. I can practically hear the chorus now, shut up and take my money. When I first tried to find the pot of gold at the end of this rainbow, I used cardboard, but there was a corrugation, a wrinkle. And it does practically nothing. It was too slow, heavy, weak, and just about every body-shaming thing that could be said. But in spite of all that shame, I could not let it go, so it precipitated into a second-generation video. This failure was the nucleation for trying again, the result of a bunch of soggy hopes. So this is our first test of the air umbrella. We're going to spin up the fan that's inside this. It's going to pull air in from the bottom and throw it off the top. This air is then going to hit our simulated rain and hopefully throw it away like a regular umbrella would, but with just air. So here comes the rain. Ah. Sometimes downpours come out of nowhere. So at full power, it looks like it can handle a light drizzle. But before we get into any heavier testing, we need to understand how it works. And I'd love to show you a little bit about how I made it. When you first dropped into this video, there was a clip about how a traditional umbrella works. Using a sheet of waterproof fabric stretched out, the rain is redirected. Looking at the air umbrella, you might have missed it. The air is drawn up in along the handle and is sped up by the impeller in the head and released to body check some rain away from me. This work cumulus, I mean culminated into the build I have detailed on my Instructables page. It's in the link below and also in the card above. Hopefully the explanation was not too cloudy because now it's time to rein in all this talking and show you how I built it and see if it works. The build took me through many revisions and iterations in Tinkercad. Some much to my frustration. But once I had settled in, I moved over to the slicer, cut up my models, and sent them to the printer. And then as my robot army was warming up, I got to go work on other things. Now just imagine me doing something productive, because let's be honest, this 3D printer got a whole lot more done during this time than I did. Now it's time for a botched cinematic reveal. Wait, is that the handle from Mule Deer? Mjolnir? Maybe Ryan's making one of those. Oh wow, look at the sleek fan thing on the end of the handle. The suspense is terrible. I hope it'll last. We've got our air umbrella and a lawn sprinkler, and we're gonna see just how well an air umbrella can work. Uh-oh. Alright, I I'm still getting pretty wet. Uh oh, it's sinking. It's sinking. Uh oh, it's sinking. It's sinking. Nope. I don't think this has enough power. That's good to know because we got one more option. So while I thought there was only one more option, such as increasing the power, there was the iterative development option of increasing the output port size to see if I could get a little bit more air out of the system. Here's a test in the shower showing that it is somewhat effective, but not quite as effective as I would have liked. So 
it looks like we're going to go and use that 70 millimeter ducted fan that I had from my maskless mask project. I don't know if you've seen Back to the Future Part 2 where Biff is telling Marty McFly, you bojo, hoverboards don't work on water unless you got power. Well, our first air umbrella didn't quite work. So we're ramping up the power. And the last time I used this, I actually stopped short because of how loud it was. So I'm going to protect my hearing as I put this thing crazy close to my head. Now it's time to cue the rain and see if this thing rips apart. Keep going! Keep going! And I'm still getting soaked. It doesn't matter. It's not work. There was a flawed concept from the start. Oh, geez, it's so wet. Ah. Okay, I'm done. Ah, it's coming back for me. So as is the case with many things, when I was just ready to give up, my wife encouraged me and said, I think your design is air starved. So I opened up the output and the input of my overpowered version. But then as you can see, the uh, weather has changed a little bit, but it's still precipitation. So let's see if our overpowered version can be an air umbrella for snow. As you can also see, I have this really nifty uh, battery holster in my shirt. I mean, it's getting some deflection of the snow. So while I'm enthralled with my weather experiment, I forget that gravity is still in play. And there goes the battery. And that shuts it off when the battery falls out. Interesting developments. Good test. <laughs> so I have the opened up high powered version of my air umbrella set up in my shower test stand and it did not disappoint. I mean, look at this thing. It is throwing so much air that it is obliterating that torrential downpour coming from the shower. I think it might actually work. If it wasn't snowing outside, I'd give this another shot, but I think we're really on to something. I'm really excited with these results. Now, granted, it's possible, but certainly not practical to make an air umbrella. So that dream might be dashed. Be honest, you liked it. Enough to subscribe to Ryan Make and even leave your feedback in the comments about this video and other project ideas. So that makes you right here in the center. But until next time, I'm just gonna keep my head in the clouds trying to figure it out. Seriously. Seriously. Stratocumulate. Whatever.